I think that's a mouse's nest. Oh yeah, it's nasty in there. On this episode of Bike Builds with AC, I'm going to rebuild the classic Honda CT70. Hey guys, we're back, but this time we've turned these single project builds into a series. We're gonna mix it up a little bit, we're gonna start having some fun, and what we have here is a CT70, internationally known as the Honda DAX. And this right here got more people riding motorcycles arguably than any other motorcycle. I'm excited because heading up to the RSD Moto Bay Classic last year, my wife had the idea that, hey, we should pick up a CT70. It didn't take much arm twisting. That's a bike I've always wanted to do a project with. We found one in Concord for $600, and here we have it. We had big aspirations of what we were gonna do restoration-wise, and life happened, and honestly, nothing happened. I put new tires on it, I washed it, and it's now sat here for a year and a half, getting used every once in a while, but always had a hunger to do a full build out on this. We're gonna bring this thing up into Garage 93 and give it the royal treatment. Half of the best memories I've ever had on a motorcycle or on a mini bike, and this right here is one of the most iconic ones to ever be produced. There's a lot of people that do custom builds on these, that do resto, resto mod, and I'd really like to find the middle ground between the Garage 93 styling, also paying tribute to the classic heritage of the CT70 DAX platform. But just with every build, we gotta start with a wash. Let's get this thing cleaned up so we can get into the shop. Can you get this part right here? It's like brushing your teeth with a motorcycle. I think that's a mouse's nest. Oh yeah, it's nasty. It's nasty in there. <laughs> They're acorns. They're acorns. There's this full of acorns. No way. There's more up there, too. That's so cool. That right there is the start of a long, long journey. She's dirty. That's OK. I can't wait to clean this thing up, get all the cobwebs, the acorns, the spiders, and anything else out of here. Give it the love it needs to become the ultimate pit bike. Family ride all in one. Pretty stoked to have a little CT70 mouse house on wheels. <laughs> it's endless, that's awesome. So we got the CT70 all torn down last night. It was uh, definitely a fun evening. We had plenty of surprises here. At first, after I washed it all up, I was super excited and how clean it was, because sometimes, you know, you give a bike a wash and it's been sitting outside long enough or it's rusty enough that, you know, you can't wash away rust, so it doesn't really look any better afterward. But it snuck up on me because once I started taking everything apart, I had a lot of problems with rust and corrosion. The uh, head studs broke off in the motor. The exhaust was seized in the cylinder head. A couple different parts that were just really difficult to get off. Originally, I had planned on refurbing a lot of the parts, and I'm still going to do that, but just by the nature of how things came off and sometimes being damaged or destroyed in that process, I'm not gonna be able to on some others. So before I start a build, I start a build sheet. So a build sheet is just a glorified shopping list. What it helps me do is keep builds in order here in the shop and let me know if I've missed anything. I add part numbers, where they are, are they shipped, are they in the world, are they in the front door? I color code them on if I've already ordered the parts, if the parts have been shipped, or if the parts have been received. You call it what you want, I call it a build sheet. It helps keep everything in order for the shop and it totally saves me a ton of time every time I do one of these builds. But overall, the thing's in good condition, it has good bones, and just needs a whole bunch of love here. So today I'm gonna assess how much love it needs, strip it down even to a more thorough state. Super excited, it's gonna be a big one. It's been a long time since I've done this, but this stuff's pretty harsh, but it's incredible what it can do to a painted finish. I'm hearing it starting to like crackle up. So I got the frame all stripped and washed up. I can keep going and going and going on all the rest of the parts I have, but I'm gonna call it a night. Had a super productive day with making build sheet in the morning, ordering everything that I think I'll need to get this thing finished up. 
and have a whole day ahead of me tomorrow. Super excited to get the motor torn down, suspension, wheels, all that stuff broken apart. But big piece of the puzzle right here with the CT is the frame. So getting this thing primed, prepped, and painted is gonna be awesome. So one step closer to the perfect pit bike. Good morning, another awesome day here in the shop. Stripping went amazing last night. I'm just trying to knock off some of the rust with a wire wheel. And we got a big day ahead of us. Hopefully today I'll get the motor completely torn apart and lay the first coat of primer on this thing. This right here is an impact. And what it does is sometimes when you heat and cool and heat and cool something over and over again, it becomes hard to remove it. So you turn it the direction you want it to go and it makes a little So I got a little bit lucky right now. Thankfully, the Motion Pro flywheel puller is the same on this as it is for the Grom, which is another bike that I have. And if you're doing one of these little Honda motors, basically all the tools you need are pretty standard that you'd have to work on stuff, except for these two. You have a four pin castle nut tool for the right side. And then for the clutch side on the left, this is what's called a flywheel puller. This just screws into the flywheel so that you have something to torque backwards on to pull it because over time with heat, they just really absolutely adhere to the motorcycle. And then after you break it loose, it's actually magnetic. Because you have the stator underneath here, which is the charging system of the motorcycle, which yeah, that's so bad. That is not good. I need to nurse this back to health. This is an OEM part that I'll use that absolutely has a ton of rust. It's not good. So I finished stripping the frame and I started doing the bodywork on the headlight bucket. The process of painting is definitely one that preparation is far more important than the painting part because it's a direct result of what you finish up. And I thought about doing Cerakote, I thought about doing powder coat on the frame, but to keep it in-house here, I don't have an oven big enough to do that. What works great? Paint. For the steel frame, because it's bare metal, I'll be using an etching primer first. And for the headlight bucket, I will be using just a normal sandable filler primer. I will use these on both, but on the metal application, I will start with this. An etching primer has a little bit of acid in it, so on raw metals, what it does is it has a quick reaction that basically gives excellent adhesion. Cleanliness is everything. Wash your hands really good before you start this job. Possibly even use some aggressive soap and or degreaser because even though you'll wear gloves for some part of it, it's good to eliminate as much oil and grease as you possibly can in the project as a whole. After you finish sanding and doing all the body work, because there's a certain point when you do the body work, you can't go backwards, so get all that done before you start painting. You need to clean up everything to remove all oil and all grease because it can create bubbles, fisheye, all kinds of issues. Acetone works excellent for that. So when painting, heat is your friend, but sometimes sunlight makes the paint flash too fast. So if you got a little shade that you can set up that's not a tree where it's gonna be dropping things onto what you're specifically trying to paint, I recommend that. Right now, it's about 95 degrees outside. So if anything, we're gonna be drying super fast. Basically, you wanna hang it somewhere where you have a good even eye level of what you're painting, but not too tall that you can't get on top of it and not too low where you can't get underneath it. Awesome morning here again, Garage 93. 
loaded with packages and gonna start crossing things off the build sheet. I've spent the past couple days working on sandblasting and Cerakoting and just refinishing all the pieces to get it all built back together. Today, I'm gonna start laying the base color on the frame, super excited for that. But before I get started, I wanna open all these packages, start crossing things off the build sheet and make sure I didn't miss anything that's gonna bite me in the end. So I'm gonna get cracking on this because we got a big day ahead. laid. I couldn't be much more excited. It looks absolutely awesome. I'd call that a semi-pro rattle can job. There's some room for improvement, but there's a whole lot of room for doing worse. And I'm happy with this, and I would have paid a body shop to do this job right here and was able to do it for less than 50 bucks in materials. Four hours ago, I may have been a little on the overwhelmed side. When you look at all of the pieces and parts in their expanded view, no matter how big or small the project, it's always something you think about going into, but I couldn't be happier with how the CT motor turned out. I feel confident about everything as far as the running systems, the transmission and kicker. At this point, the only thing I have to do is uh, put it in a chassis and see if I can get it to fire up. But I'm feeling super confident about it. I love how the Cerakote turned out. I love how the metal process finishes turned out. And overall, I feel pretty happy and confident with how the build went. And I'm just excited to put this thing in a frame. couldn't be happier with how it's coming together. You know, right now, honestly, in the building side, a lot of the easy stuff has been complete, at least on assembly. I still have to do a lot of wiring, some mounting, bracketing, but CT70 project, absolute success so far. I cannot wait to finish this thing and ride it. So after one last night of putting all the puzzle pieces together, lighting, wiring, hand controls, hopefully we can squeeze in a sunset session here for a test ride. All I have to do is pour some fuel in, kick it, and I think we have ourselves a runner, or at least we can hope. We barely even needed the choke.
Grayson. 